This is the completed Arvin radio, model 417. And I had to do some modifications to it, just slightly, to get it to work properly. First of all, here's the antenna coil. And the primary winding of this was open, and that couples a uh, signal from the antenna into the, uh, into the grid of the oscillator and mixer tube. The secondary winding that connected the grid was still okay, so I just used a 100 picofarad capacitor to couple the signal in. Now another thing about this is that the volume control was originally in the antenna circuit, kind of like the old TRF radios. At this time, they, they hadn't really standardized on the circuits of superheterodyne radios so much as they were a little bit later. And so a lot of these early superheterodynes from the mid-30s use circuits more like the TRF sets. Here's the schematic. The volume control originally was right here. And I'm thinking that what it did was to vary the, uh, vary the negative bias on the, uh, on the grid of the mixer and oscillator tube. But with the, uh, since this antenna coil was open, I just rewired the volume control circuit to put it in between the detector tube and the output tube just as a conventional audio volume control. And then I just connected the uh, resistor, um, this resistor here. Let's see which one it would have been here. This resistor here, I just connected it to ground because in the full volume position it would have gone to ground. So I just removed this resistor, connected this one to ground, and then relocated the volume control. Let's see if I can move the, move the schematic over here. I just put the volume control right after this capacitor and just wired it into the audio circuit. And this detector tube uses an old time circuit too. It, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but there's no diodes in it. Just triode and uh, a pentode for the IF amplifier and then a triode for the detector. And it uses the triode for the detector and it doesn't have I guess it, I don't know if that somehow also acts as the first audio stage or if it doesn't have a first audio stage. I'm not exactly sure how it worked, but at least I figured out how to get the volume control working by putting it between that stage and the output tube. I put the fuse in, I used a grounded power cord, and the ground through the power cord really helps the performance of it. And there are all the new capacitors I put in and the resistor substitutes for the field coil. Another thing I had to do was to replace the output transformer. Let me turn it, turn it around here. And so I just put up where the old electrolytic capacitor would have been, I just mounted the output transformer there. I just used one of the bolts uh, that originally mounted the old capacitor there to mount it, and it seems to be okay. And there's the top of it. And I just used a modern speaker to substitute and it fit right in. I won't throw the old speaker out in case the uh, in case that would ever want to be put back. I'll just keep it around somewhere, but it's really fallen apart. So now I'll put everything back together and then in the next video I'll demonstrate the performance.